Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, me and ChatGPT are gonna be vibe coding an app together. So I said here in this prompt, hey, I want to build a rock, paper, scissors app in React with JavaScript, we'll be vibe coding. So you'll give me all the code step-by-step, step. I'll be pasting it in and explaining it. So I thought this would be kind of cool. We can demonstrate how the AI is able to communicate with the human and how we can collaborate together to build something like rock, paper, scissors, which is a pretty classic little app when you're first learning to code. Heck yes, Mike, let's vibe code this rock, paper, scissors app. All right, cool. So hopefully it gives me code. Yeah, it looks like it's doing that. So this is all gonna be in React and I'm just gonna be explaining it as we go. So the first thing up here that it's asking us to do, and I'm gonna increase the font size a bit, is import use state. So use state is just gonna allow us to do all sorts of stuff in React. This is gonna allow us to keep track of different pieces of state and then when they update, it'll update on the browser. So here I'm just in stack blitz and I have like a basic React app set up. Next, we're creating a bunch of state. So these pieces of state down here, let's take a look at what we got. The player choice, so that would be like rock, paper, scissors, the computer choice, same thing, and then the result of the match. So like who won the match, I guess that would be stored there. And then we have all of this stuff down here, which is the JSX, let's paste that in. So it looks like we have a title, choose your weapon, and then we have three options. Each one of these are buttons. And whenever we click on the button, we're calling this handle choice method. So I'm guessing that's what we're gonna to have to implement next. So handle choice most likely is going to be modifying these pieces of state. So the user will be able to choose and then the computer will also have a chance to choose. All right, so let's say next. All right, let's wire up the game logic. So drop this inside. This is kind of cool. It's cool how I can just like, you know, ask the AI to do it and it kind of does. Now let's take a look at this method. So I'm gonna put this in here. This is the handle choice. So this is what happens whenever the user selects an option. So either rock, paper, or scissors. So let's see what this is doing. First thing it's doing is giving us an array of choices. So it says, okay, these are all the possible things that the player could put. And then the computer has choices.random. So in here, we're basically having the computer select a random choice from each one of these. And then the player up here, this is gonna be whatever the player selected, right? So we're passing that in either rock, paper, or scissors. And then we're setting those pieces of state using these two variables. So the reason that we wanna store these in state is because we're gonna to wanna to represent it on the browser, like on the DOM here. So once we change these pieces of state, then I'm sure we'll have like some sort of a piece of user interface for that. And in here, we're checking the game logic. So if the player is equal to the computer, then we set the result equal to draw. So in other words, they select the same thing. Otherwise, we're checking each one of the options. So essentially there's three different situations, right? Either the player picks rock, the computer picks scissors, player picks paper, computer picks rock, or the player picks scissors and the computer picks paper. So the player can only choose three things. And then for each one of those, there's sort of like the thing that beats it, right? And we're just checking all of those. So this here would check to see if the player was winning, right? So if they picked any one of these three winning states, like rock against scissors, paper against rock, or scissors against paper, then they would win. Otherwise, we would set the result to you lose. So it looks like the result here is just like the string, you know, either you win or you lose. All right, so let's see what happened so far. So far, nothing is wired up. Now, actually, this game logic would work. So the piece of state should work. And down here, we could check that. So we could just type out, um, and what was that piece of state called? Result. So initially the result is just set to draw, or I guess null, but if, or I think I modified this. Yeah, so initially it's just null, but now if I pick one, we can see what happens. So the game is technically working now, it's wired up. It's just, we don't have a way of kind of indicating what the player chose and what the computer chose. So that's probably gonna come next. So let's type next. All right, let's make those results visible. Update your return block to look like this. So now we're adding things into the return block. So right here, as long as they have two choices, it looks like we're putting the results in. So instead of just printing out the results down here, let's go ahead and do that over here. So you'll see how like step-by-step -step chat GPT is kind of like filling in the gaps. And this is sort of in the same vein as like vibe coding. A lot of times when people talk about vibe coding, they talk about 
the AI just sort of doing everything. In this case, we're sort of hybridizing. And this is how a lot of people are using AI nowadays is like, they just have the AI fill in one little piece or they'll have it, you know, do like, for example, this logic up here, like this if statement, it's the perfect thing for an AI to do because it knows like the rules of rock, paper, scissors and it knows how to check all of this stuff. Like nowadays, especially you don't have to do as much of this sort of menial kind of rote intellectual work. That's where we can like off offload to the AI. All right, so now we have the descriptions here of what the actual game state was. So now if I click rock, paper, computer chose rock. It looks like the computer is choosing rock every single time. Oh, no, there we go. It's scissors. It's just like really randomly chose rock like five times in a row. All right, so we kind of have the basic game wired up. Now I wonder if we can have it create some visuals. Let's make it more visually appealing. And then maybe we can have it like keep track of, you know, how many times the computers won or the computers lost. All right, so we have some classes here. Now I'm assuming these are all just gonna work. <laughs> Let's see how that works. So we can import these into our app.css. So I'm just gonna put them in there. And I just wanna make sure that the class names match. So game container and buttons. So yeah, we have that game container buttons. Let's see if this works. If I just save. And oh, we need to import app.css. Oh, there we go, okay. I forgot to put the forward slash. All right, it's cool. So now look at this, just with pasting that in, it actually looks so much better. So let's take a look at some of these stylings. So the game container, this was this whole kind of thing right here. We gave it a max with the 400. I actually wonder if this would, yeah, look, so it even kind of like flexes when we change the screen size. Max with the 400, that's why that's there. Um, margin is two rems, auto padding is 1.5 rems. Yeah, we got some cool background, some color for all of that. So that looks really good. And then for the buttons container, it's just a flex display. So that's why we were able to put these buttons right next to each other. And then for each button, it's just getting these nice uh, little displays as well. Cool, so now whenever we click on these, it just shows the results. And then as well, we got a funny little message. I wonder what happens when we lose. Oh, you lose, okay, it's still green. All right, so yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now let's keep track of how many games they won, loss, and do a win percentage. Ugh. All right, so we're gonna level up the app with a little percentage mark, percentage meter. All right, so a lot of these we still have. Now this is another thing when you're coding with AI is once you start to get into these more kind of complex features, um, you are then gonna have to like understand like, okay, we already put these in there, so we need to put these below them, et cetera. Like you do have to have some knowledge of how everything is kind of wired up. But here you'll see we set the number of wins and the number of losses in a piece of state. And then from those pieces of state, we're gonna be able to derive like win percentage. Now update handle choice function to track wins and losses. All right, so then inside of here, we either set the wins plus one or we set the losses plus one. So down here when they win, we set that and then set losses, oops. Losses plus one. So we're using these pieces of state inside of the handle choice method in order to keep track of how many wins and losses that they had. And then the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is like display that. So fi finally under the results display in your JSX, add a win loss tracker. Cool, so now we can just paste this code right in here. All right, now let's see what happens. So, all right, yeah, we got win rate. So loss is one, win rate 0%. <laughs> Draw, lost again. Okay, there, we're starting to win. This is great. And then you'll see that it's updating in real time. So in down here, we're just using some math, math.round, wins divided by wins plus losses times 100. Yeah, so that's a, about what we would wanna have. The cool thing with the AI is like, for example, this math right here, this might be something that's kind of confusing. You know, a lot of people will probably struggle with this. I know that I probably wouldn't have been able to come up with this just right off the top of my head. So it kind of fills in these little areas like that, you know, little things like with math or even like with this if statement up here, I know I mentioned this before, it just allows you to be able to get that kind of low level logic that a lot of times people, you know, really have to rack their brains about. You can just kind of get it for free. 
All right, let's do one more. This is kind of cool how you can just like build this out so quickly with AI. All right, let's polish the flow. After a result, the player might want to go again without reloading the whole page. Yeah, so I guess this would just be like the play again button would reset everything. All right, so it says under your results section, right after the score tracker, add this. All right, so we'll add this guy in. And that's just play again. So I'm guessing, yeah, like it's just gonna reset everything. Scroll up and add the reset game function inside your component. Okay. So we'll put this alongside the handle choice. So let's see what this is doing. It's essentially saying player's choice is null, computer choice is null, set result is equal to null. And actually I think what I'd want to do, cause like, why do we need the play? I guess the play again would just allow you to keep playing, right? I guess it would clear out everything as well. It's interesting to see how ChatGPT does this. All right, and then we have some CSS that we'll paste in. You can put that down here. So let's see exactly what this did. I'm gonna comment it out. Yeah, so it just like changes the button, gives it like a, a little gray background and stuff. All right, so let's see what it does. If I click on all of these, play again, just sort of resets everything. Yeah, I don't know that we even like really need this button. Maybe what I'll have it do is, or maybe we'll just ask, why do we need this? Great question. This is where intentional UX design comes. Oh, we're talking about UX now. That's great. So let's break down why, why do we have a play again button? Player makes a choice result show, but the buttons to play are always visible. So technically they can just play again instantly by clicking. You shift it into a two phase experience, the decision phase and then the result phase. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. This is again where I think you kind of need the human in the mix because the AI is just sort of making decisions. Like even to depending on like how I would ask it, it would kind of give me a different answer. All right, so let's show a hot streak if the player's on a roll. All right, we're adding two more pieces of state, streak and last outcome. So let's do that. All right, so this will tell us how many streaks they had and then what the last outcome was. And then this will go into the handle choice. All right, so let's put this down here. If the player is equal to the computer, so if they have the same thing, and actually, no, is this the same? Oh no, I think this is gonna be different. Right, we're setting the streak. So this logic is similar to the logic up here, but I think we need to put it down there. Again, this is where you kind of have to understand uh, what it wants us to do. Yeah, so if the player is equal to the computer, set the result equal to draw. See, now it's like, what do I do with this? Let's ask. So this was already that logic that we had in there. Nice, that's your game outcome logic. And we're about to evolve it, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so in this case, it's, it kind of like gave us new logic. So I think we need to replace it. Let's do this. Okay, so now it should keep track of the streak, like how many times they won. So last, if the last outcome is equal to win, then you add one to the streak. Otherwise, uh, or no, if the last outcome it was a win, then you add one to the streak. Otherwise you just set it equal to one. Um, and then set wins one, uh, win plus one. Okay, so what changed? Want to test this? All right, so this, let's see if this works. So we'll paste this down here, maybe just like right below here. It'll tell us if we're on a streak. So I lost, and then where is that streak? Oh no, it's only gonna show up if we're on a streak. So I'm gonna have to start winning at some point. Yeah, there we go. Okay, you're on a two win streak. Oh, and then it goes away. I wonder if I'm in the way of this. Maybe I'll have to remove my face. Okay, cool, so that looks good. All right, so I think that just about does it for this video. We've created what is essentially like a fully fledged rock, paper, scissors app in only a matter of like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you wanna see me do more of these, let me know. And otherwise I'll see you in the next one.